Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Roblox video uh, and another Rose Scale Bark tutorial. Uh, not too long ago I released a major update to this game completely overhauling how the destination system works and I'd like to create an updated video that shows that process of what you have to do uh, because it affects actually a couple other things including setting up a consist and uh, how you select cameras anyhow so just like before with the legacy fleet you click the gray part of the car and it pops up with a menu uh, you can choose any of the six lines that are shown here uh, as well as for whatever reason I made it so you can set like open house I don't know why I ha even have it on the legacy fleet but you know whatever uh, and then we've also got over here car counts so this affects what shows up on the sign alongside the uh, alongside the number showing how long your train is and so what each of these means, uh, cars only will just show, say, 10 car train. Uh, line color will show 10 car YL line for yellow line train. Or as is shown in the UI here, 6 car red line for red line train, per se. Uh, door count 2019 to somewhere recently. I don't know the exact time they stopped doing this but um uh, is door count and the reason that i have it on here twice is if you set it to 2019 to 2020 whatever uh six car trains will be counted as board center and will not show door count this will allow six car trains to show six car two door or six car three door depending on whether or not you are Legacy Fleet or Fleet of the Future. That's so basically do 2019 if you want six cars to be board center, 20 do 2023 if you want six cars to not be board center. Otherwise, they're pretty much the same. Like I said, two door for Legacy Fleet, three door for Fleet of the Future. That's what it's going to show on the sign. No bikes. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, sign is just gonna say whatever car train, and then no bikes. And all of that is also listed here, except I didn't include no bikes for some reason. But yeah, it's all of that is listed on the menu in the bottom right here in um, short order. Out of service, obviously that really hasn't changed train won't stop hasn't changed and turn signs off haven't cha hasn't changed it's just in this menu now uh, to actually select a specific destination on any of the lines you simply click click on the menu for the corresponding line and that will open up a sub menu that has all of these options for train destinations and you can pick any or all of them uh, they all work orange line menu here yellow line green line blue line and then we've got the purple line which only has two destinations uh, each of these lines has a pair of primary destinations and then a bunch of uh, historic line uh, historic destinations from throughout Bart's history like uh, for instance back in the day when Bart used to run trains to Colma or uh, say if we go into the yellow line um, Back in like 1972, when trains didn't go the whole way to the airport, because or even through the Transbay tube, because it wasn't quite open yet, 
So I've got Oakland City Center 12th Street as a destination. Just as a couple examples. But uh, yeah, every line has t the two current destinations listed here as pr under primary destinations and then older destinations or weird ones are listed over to the right. And that goes for all of the lines except for Purple Line, which doesn't have any histor- like, technically, the Purple Line itself is historic destinations, but because it only runs between two stations, its route has never changed. It's just that line has been discontinued and brought back a couple of times. If we go back to the yellow line here, you'll notice that there are a couple of secondary destinations, and that is because on weekdays, the uh, uh, at certain parts of the day, um, BART runs to different destinations. So I've got the prim the two primary destinations of San Francisco Airport and Antioch listed here, and then the secondary destinations of uh, San Francisco, San Francisco Airport Milbrae, which is, which that starts after 9 p.m. typically, and then San Francisco, Pittsburgh Bay Point, every other train goes to Pittsburgh Bay Point, not Antioch. And then there's one train, like, right in the evening, I do believe, um, that skips the airport and goes straight to Milbrae, so I have that listed as a secondary destination. And there's a lot of random destinations and you can find out each of them for yourselves. There are a couple of important things to note considering concerning how the destination system works. Most notably is when you set up a consist uh, uh, you're gonna if you want the signs to work properly when you set up your consist, like so, and you select it, and then you connect your train together, so let's connect it up here. Now that we're all connected up, we can move. Uh, so, you can set it up like normally. It's just sometimes, I, and I have seen some people do this, uh, one of the biggest mistakes that people make, and this, this only has really been a mistake as of recently, uh, because of how I made the signs work, people I've noticed some people putting their lead car into the consist which is unnecessary because for one if you don't put it into the consist then you can still use you can still use the uh, horn and door sound effects and also uh, it's now necessary because of how I coded the signs if your train is in a consist like this, if your lead car is in the consist, even if the number is the same as the, as its actual DCC address, the signs will not activate because it is looking for a car that is not in the lead consist. It is also very important that you put all of your cars into the consist now, which already was something that you should be doing so that sound plays from all of the cars but uh, you need to put all of your cars into a consist otherwise it, it, any car that is not listed as part of the consist will affect the signs and um, as many of you have noticed the signs flash as a train comes in and then go steady once you open the train doors and then they will turn off when you close the doors if you but the uh the sign 
is looking for whatever the last car on your train is that passed the detector that is not in a consist. So if you have any cars past your lead car or whatever car you're controlling, you want to control the train with and play sounds from, um, then it is going to pick those up and playing sounds from any cars ahead of it that you are trying to uh, will not cause will not make the signs work as they are intended to. So, just a word of warning there. Now, the last two things that I have to add is. Uh, previously, the destination menu was for the Fleet of the Future could be acquired by clicking on the line color square. Since that's a small place to click and can be difficult to click, uh, especially if you if you have a train actively moving, I've decided to change the location that you click for the destination menus on the Fleet of the Future and I have changed it to the roof of each of the cars seeing as having that as the click point effectively the same click point as the Legacy Fleet uh, worked really well and it's a nice big part that should always be visible to you um, when you're running a train so yeah it'll be a lot easier to set up your lines. Also, uh, and this is something that I did not intend to add, but uh, I am not removing it because, you know, it kind of works out. Uh, if you actually come in here and select, say, uh, 24th Street Mission Train for Yellow Line, if you close out of that menu and then tap on another line color, and this is this will work for the Legacy Fleet too. It just doesn't sh show it. Uh, it will actually change the line color, but not the destination. So what that means is you actually can run any of the 87 destinations uh, from any line with any line color if you so choose like I could say uh, San Francisco Daily City Orange Line Orange Line doesn't even go to there but you can s if you so desire to be an Orange Line train to Daily City be my guest But, yeah. Anyhow, all trains will start by default as line color for the car count here. So, if you want to run any of the other ones, you will need to come into this video and change it. The last thing that I have to add is, uh, previously, you were able to click off to the... S to the side of each car um, in a somewhat arbitrary position. The Legacy Fleet and the Fleet of the Future, I had it right next to that right side cab window, uh, and get a menu of onboard cameras. That will no longer be the case starting today, basically. Uh, and the reason for that is I've made it easier and more reliable to do that because uh, even I was having issues say I wanted to use one of the B car onboard cameras the actual click point was like either here or here and on one of the two sides and it was very confusing to try and figure out where it was located so I've actually made it so that the onboard camera menu is located within the destinations menu. So now, instead of having to find an invisible part in along the side and clicking it, you just need to tap on the roof of the car, the 
the roof of the fleet of the future or any gray part of the legacy fleet and then click where it says onboard cameras and you'll find yourself a menu that I need to fix uh, because all of the numbers are the same and also it looks like the scripting is messed up I will fix that but uh, functionality won't change you find the onboard menu right here in the destinations menu and from there you can click onto any of the side windows say you want to do two at the same time I don't know why you'd want to do that but there you go YouTube compression is gonna love that uh, but yeah also for those of you who would like to actually operate a train from one of these menus I've made it so that if you hide the menu this is still in the same spot as it was in the old menu because uh, as I have learned this little marker here if your if your screens 1080 by uh, 19 1920 by 1080 uh, or really anything because on pretty much all of the screens that I've used it's been in, in the right spot uh, this lines up perfectly with the black markers along the platforms and so as a result you can use this as your point of reference for stopping properly along the platform if you choose to use my system of slowing down as soon as the lead door hits the 8th black mark along the platform if you're a 10 car train. More on that is in one of my previous videos where I showed you how to properly stop. But as you can see, granted it's... I'm not perfect. So, uh, I overran just a tiny bit, but that marker is pretty much right where it needs to be for the platform. For stopping properly along the platform. That pretty much does it for this update for Roscale Bark. Uh, anything else that is included in this update? At this point is up for you to discover. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in another one, uh, in another video. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching.